And as a manager, his teams have won 11 All-Ireland Hurling Championships, including a record equaling four in a row between 2006 and 9. 18 Leinster Championships, 10 National League Hurling titles, 7 Walsh Cup titles and a Rock to Tournament title. In achieving all of this success, Brian has created an unbreakable spirit among his players and teams which have come to define Kilkenny Hurling. On behalf of the Kilkenny people everywhere, the statement reads, the Kilkenny County Board extends sincere gratitude to Brian for his lifetime of contribution to the county and the commitment and passion he brought as a player and as a manager working tirelessly with a single aim to do what was best for Kilkenny Hurling. The board would also like to acknowledge the bond Brian helped create between team management, players, county board clubs and supporters clubs as all work seamlessly together in preparing our teams while organising and promoting our games. We're aware of the huge debt we owe Brian for the wonderful successes and occasions we've enjoyed as we watch the teams he created play and succeed wherever and whenever our games are discussed in the future. Brian Cody's achievements will be the benchmark managers are measured by. We wish Brian all the best in the future. We'll have Nicky Brennan, the former GA president and all Ireland winner and former teammate of Brian's in a moment. Cyril Farrell, though, is all of, all, the whole hurling country is, is reacting to this breaking news today. 24 years. Cyril Farrell, the former Galway All-Ireland winning manager is on the line. Cyril, how are you? Very good, no, very good. Can't complain. Uh, an end of an era, Cyril? Yeah, sure. I suppose it had to come sometime, but like uh, when it comes in, it's, it's quite a shock because like Brian seemed to go on forever. Look at his record, speaks for himself, and he's a legend in his own time. Do you remember when he first took over Kilkenny, say the late 90s? Do you, did you expect big things? You would have known him surely as uh, somebody that was involved in the Kilkenny Galway battles in maybe the 70s, early 80s. Yeah, yeah, sure. He was playing against us full back and full forward. Look, he was always a great hurler and always a, a, a fierce hurling man, like, you know, any time you don't see them train or any match around, he'd be, there's a few there in Kilkenny at every game. And, like, he, the, the sport consumed him really, like, he, he gave his whole life to it. What was the key ingredient to success, Cyril, do you think? I suppose you'd, you'd have to say the players, every day they played for him, they, they died on their backs. The, the, the real commitment, the spirit, you know, the application. You always knew what you were going to get from them. They never kind of had enough. To, even if they got beaten, they just they, they died with their boots on. You got the same. You knew what you were going to get. You know, you could hit them hard, but they'd hop up and drive on. There was never any complaints, really, like, you know, they played at the final whistle. And I know from a call point of view, we'd never be sure of beating them unless we're out, out, of, out of Crow Park or out the gate because they, they, they were deadly for coming from the, from the death near the end. It's interesting that Galway were kind of a symbolic uh, team that Brian Cody maybe measured his managerial success by. So 2001, you beat them in the semi-final, and then 2005 again, you beat them in another semi-final. And subsequently, from those uh, wins for Galway, Kilkenny really surged again. Yeah, well, like he kept improving, improving. Like you know, when he would, that time he would lose. Like he'd go back to the drawing board and like improve his team again. He was able to see things in players that no one else would see. Like he'd, he'd, he'd cover all kind of games, not alone just the senior, intermediate, junior, the whole lot. He'd, he'd pluck a lad out of obscurity, really. Like he could see something that you know in him, and he'd put the he'd put that ingredient into him, and like they'd, they'd play accordingly. You were in the Sunday game box for many years, Cyril. Um, what were the great days you felt that uh, Brian got the the most out of these Kilkenny players? Which we nearly got it every day. Like even last, even last weekend against Limerick, like uh, you know, two weekends ago when, when, they, when they were beaten, I, I still thought it was a phenomenal like uh, performance by Kilkenny because they wouldn't have the quality that they had when he when he you know in, in the mid when he was winning all these All-Irons. They Hard to have that quality at all time. But like uh, some of the teams, some of the games against Galway and against Tipperary were. Were, were, were fantastic games like and he usually came out on top but win or lose like he'd drive on to the next he, he just seemed never in them because he was there the whole time like, you look at all the men that come and, and come and gone in between you know it's, it's unreal really like you know and what he won I don't know whatever he achieved again but it's hard to keep going the way he did every year every year every year like it, it consumes you but then it becomes a stage you have to kind of call time but like with him you think he was never going to call time it was a simplicity about his philosophy, wasn't there, uh, Cyril? It's all about work rate, honesty of endeavour, and giving it everything. Yeah, well, that was it. Like, and you know, he'd always say there's only one stat that counts, and that's the one at the end of the game that you have the most scores. Like, okay, look at you had the people have believed now oh, he's too old and this sort of thing. He doesn't know the modern game. Look, he's able to play the modern game as good as anyone else. They can work it out the fence and play it up. But you can't with him. You have to have the players do all these things. Like, but he he went from from you know from kind of he. The decades he had there, like he went from from one extreme to the other, like you know, and he high balls was was one thing that he loved, and Kilkenny were very good in the air and got great scores over them. Were usually the best team in the air, and then when that kind of stopped, he went out to play out the fence as well. But like he had great players, but like you like managers need great players, but great players need need a great person over them. 
And Kilkenny was the only thing, really. That was the essence of it. It's all about Kilkenny as a county. It's all about Kilkenny hurling. So sometimes uh, people will look in from the outside and go, whoa, there's not much sentiment there. Well, you see, if you want to be successful, like uh, people are all different. Like, but his his mantra was like, if it's, it's all for Kilkenny, it's all for the good of the team. Like he was never questioned in the sense like he won so much, so it's hard to question. Like, and if a player did, like he usually found if he wasn't doing his job well, if you weren't doing it, you were called off. And if you ever noticed in the sideline, like he'd always make sure they never to shake hands with a leg coming off. That was it. Like even missing players, if he was missing good players, he'd never look. He'd say, "I have fifteen. I have fifteen Kilkenny people out there, and they're good enough. That's all I want." Would you know him well? Would you have known him well, Cyril? I would, yeah. Like, I'd be him at kind of fun. He's, he's a great man. Always turns up for the, you know, the game for cancer, for the hoarding game that Jim Boulder has. He'd always manage the team down in. Look, he'd, I'd know him pretty well to the, you know, meeting him after all star doing that. Like, and, like, he comes across, like, he's not, he's, like, on the sideline, he's a different person to what he is off the pitch. Like, but that's always where these guys, like, they can be completely different. But that, you know, he wouldn't be kind of, you know, going around doing things. Hurling consumed him. He wasn't going, you know, you wouldn't be going out for horse racing or anything like that. Like you'd be thinking of Hurland the whole time. A bit of crack then? Yeah, yeah well, like, if you got to know him, sure he was great crack, but to get to know him was the thing, like, you know him, like, it's hard enough to get to know him, but he was that kind, he was very silent, like, and he wouldn't suffer fools, like, really, you couldn't blame him. James Stevens as well is a huge part of his identity, like, the... the, the... Oh, yeah, look, at he, he, yeah. he loved the club, and he'd say to you, like, if, if he had 26 fellas in the panel, and they couldn't go back and be leaders in their club, He'd say, "Look, they're not much good to me, and I'm not. I'm not doing a good job either." He'd want them to be leaders, you know. That's 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 would be. If we to go back to the club, that's how he judged them really. Winning four in a row. I mean, like Limerick are on the way at the moment, but they still haven't done it. Kilkenny did it. Yeah, like sure, they're, they're they're the mantra really. Like and John Kyle, you know, look another great man. Like he's, he's, he's you know, he's, he's what has he won four, four to five years of that. Like go for four in a row. Like uh, only for Kilkenny, maybe he he would have won another one. You wouldn't know, like, but like they are a very good side. But just tell you, like, how good Kilkenny were when when everything that comes now they're being compared to the to the we call it the Brian Cody's Kilkenny team. Uh, think of all the players that went through Brian Cody's hands as a manager: Henry Shefflin, Tommy Walsh, Richie Hogan, T.J. Reid, J.J. Delaney. Like even back to DJ Carey, John Power. You know, it, it, it's amazing. Like a bit like Alex Ferguson, he was able to have three or four teams. Yeah, well, that was the thing. You see, like he he transcended the uh, different decades. Like, you see, it's very hard to do that. Like, he might be in the good team, and then when they're gone, you're kind of gone. But like, he he seemed to be able to build them the whole time. And uh, like, they had very good success under age, but not 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 you know not as much as my own county here. Galway would have as much success as anyone, but not kind of has failed to do what what Kilkenny have done. Like, and to me, like it's down to Brian Cody. Like, he's still that spirit. Like, his his uh, his dressing was kind of. Was, was a sacrament, if you want to be. You had to be very good to get in there. When you were in there, you had to perform certain ways, and that was it. Like Cyril, thanks so much. No problem, pleasure is mine. Cyril Farrell there, Galway legend. Uh, Jamesy O'Connor's on the line. Uh, Claire All Ireland winning uh, hurler of the year, nineteen ninety seven. Jamesy, how are you? John, I'm good. Yourself? Not too bad. Uh, end of an era, isn't it, for hurling for all of us around the country, hurling fans? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll never see his like again. I think. Um, I suppose look at just his longevity. You know the success, obviously, he had. Um, you know, I suppose in my lifetime, certainly that team, that the, the four in a row team, were the greatest team that that, that that I've ever seen. With you know, packed full of iconic players, and um, yeah, listen, he leaves a, a, a massive legacy in Kilkenny, and it's not just John the success, but I think it's the it's just the values, and you know, there's a generation of Kilkenny players that you know will obviously step into you know leadership roles and and, and you know managerial roles with Kilkenny minor under twenty one or twenty and, and and senior sides. And I'd imagine, you know, those same values um, would hold true in terms of, you know, the team first, the jersey first, um, you know, putting egos to one side, you know, the ability to win your own ball, all those things that I think that he that he believed in, those core values that he had. And to me, if anything, that's the the bigger thing that he would leave behind, as I said, is 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 Kilkenny hurling, you know, would be able to fall back on those those intrinsic things that he believed in, I'd, I'd imagine, for years and maybe even decades to come. In 1999, it was his first season in charge and you played them in the semi-final and then you were in the final in 2002 and you lost both games. And when he, when he got the job, you could really begin to tell from the get-go that this was a coming force and then a force that had a lot of longevity. Yeah, I mean, you know, they beat us in the semi-final in 99 and um, you know, I remember DJ getting a, just a brilliant goal, I think maybe midway through the second half that just probably took them a little bit away from us. And, uh, you know, we were probably 
coming near to the end. But I, I suppose that what I remember, but they lost the All Ireland final, John to Cork. You know, we're expected to win it. A wet day. Cork weren't supposed to win All Ireland on wet days. And Shawnee McGrath, I think, got, got four points. Um, and Mark Landers was the one that ended up lifting that that title. But we we been down to play them in a in a, a challenge match in Gorn in two thousand. Um, I'd say about two weeks before we played Tip in the championship, and we had got the training badly wrong. Lagnan had really flogged us and worked us hard. And um, but I remember that night uh, or that evening is a Sunday evening down in Gorn. Um, I was marking I think Peter Barry, and I remember wondering as Peter Barry. And every other Kilkenny player put a stone and muscle on because uh, they just look bigger, stronger. And clearly, they were intent on making a statement that night that we might be potential opponents down the line and they were going to lay down a marker and they just ate us alive. And I remember being concussed. Um, and I don't remember being concussed. I just remember the, the end of that game, the second half. And uh, they just, as I said, they just mowed us down that night. And that was, you know, they meant business that year. And um, obviously, look at them and Don won the All Ireland that year. And you know, beat us in the final in 2002 and, you know, I suppose they took their their lead from him. You know, he was driven, he was motivated um, and he was probably that little bit rattier, you know, having obviously experienced the disappointments of, of, of 99 and 01. Um, but to, to, to stay for as long as he had and continue, John, to get the best out of kick any teams and, you know, the one thing you could never say was that the players didn't play for him or the jersey and the, there was, I suppose, no better evidence of that than that than last Sunday when you know you're wondering how they're still in this game at half time and you're wondering how are the only two points behind you know entering the final minutes given how well Limerick had, had played um, so I think he walks away on his own terms I think I saw no evidence of any displeasure or discomfort the final whistle I thought he was very much happy that the players couldn't have given him any more that the backroom team had left no stone and turned couldn't have done any more and that the better team had won and I think as I said you know he was at peace with himself you know walking off Croke Bart knowing that and I think comfortable that he was you know probably had made the decision probably mm. I'd imagine maybe weeks maybe months ago um, and that he was he loved obviously to have gone out on top but I think he, he walks away in his own terms certainly content that he did a hell of a job with Kilkenny this year Every time there was a, a bit of a setback Jamesy he was able to renew so oh one they lost to Galway uh, won the next two All-Irelands then they lost to Cork and Galway 04 and 05 and, and players would come in there was a bit of a revolving door at times of players um, you know if 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 like even and I'll get to it in a moment I'll get to the four in a row in a moment but even like when you think about it like 2012 Walter Walsh is man of the match in the replay 2014 Kieran Joyce man of the match in the replay just the fact that anybody if they were good enough on the day to hold that jersey would get that jersey yeah, I mean, and 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 he, you know, he picked on form, and and obviously he placed massive value in store in those, you know, those famous training matches in Nolan Park, and I suppose look at, you know, he he's consistent in what he said. I mean, he always spoke about not wanting a settled team, wanting a settled spirit, and um, and I suppose look at, it, you know, when you're a panelist, um, I suppose with Cody, you always felt that look at you had a chance, and if you did the business in those training matches in Nolan Park. You know, and 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 you deserved it. Um, you know, he would give you your opportunity and and uh, and give you the jersey. And I think as well his his knowledge of, of of the game, John. I mean, and even you know, knowing for example that Walter Walsh had a good underage track record on Johnny Cohn. You know, for the rest of us, we're wondering where is this guy coming out of, and this is a you know a, a stroke of madness. But really, it was a stroke of genius because you know he he spotted a potential maybe. Um, you know, I won't say a weakness for Gallo, but an area maybe that could be that could be exploited, given Walter's size and you know the the, the mismatch maybe that that, that that created. And uh, mm. you know, I suppose that's that's something that maybe you know he maybe didn't get the full credit for in terms of you know his tactical awareness and his ability to identify where maybe the weakest link in the opposition was and and go after it. I mean, we saw mm. Henry, for example, pitching over on onto John O'Keefe at the start of the mm. was it the twenty twenty eleven All Ireland final, mm. you know. Eddie Brennan appeared on on on, on you know a, a raw maybe an inexperienced Seamus Hickey and was at the 07 final and you know he's you talk to some of the former players and you know he was very open in terms of the players having a say or you know respecting their opinions um in terms of the way they they, they played but at the same time you know there was never any doubt as to who was boss and he always kept that distance and uh, and he was ruthlessly unsentimental in terms of picking the best team and it didn't matter about who you were or what you had done. Um, it was about putting the best 15 at that point on any given day out for Kilkenny and that's what he did James you stay in the li- line there please uh, we're also joined by Nicky Brennan the former GA president All-Ireland winning player with Kilkenny and former teammate of Brian Cody Nicky how are you? 
Hello, hello, John. Good to talk to you. And you, Nicky, an end, uh, an end of an era, Nicky, simple as that. Oh, it's just surely, that's one way of putting it all right, because uh, uh, he's been there for, dare I say, it, a quarter of a century almost, and uh, that is a, a, a huge bit of longevity patrolling the sidelines, and uh, it will be rather strange next year to see somebody different wearing the Bonas Shore bibs. We knew in the past week it was uh, happening. It was a question of when rather than if. And I suppose there has been speculation over the last year or so. But uh, I suppose there comes a time in uh, in every manager's life when for, for different reasons. Brian Feely, he has done all he can. Although I have to say now, I was very close to him on Sunday night at the function for the team when they came back to Kilkenny. And I spoke to him after the um, after the event was over just to thank him and all that for his help to us on the radio. And uh, I listened to him in uh, UPMC Nolan Park on Monday night. He certainly didn't give the impression of somebody who was walking away because he, he talked about the uh, how well they had done. There was no one giving him a chance and they had very got close to the uh, end line. Uh, but he acknowledged the better team won. But I fenced there was a sense of... Uh, of uh, not just pride in that, but uh, great expectation and hope for what 2023 has uh, has to offer. Now there still is, of course, but uh, the the mantra is handed over to somebody else now on the sideline, and uh, Brian will uh, will will sit into the background and uh, put up the feet and in, and enjoy life. But but when I say that, he'll still be very much a, a fixture on the James Stevens GA club scene because despite all his efforts with Kenny over the years, he was never too far from. Uh, his beloved James Stevens activities. He'll go down as the greatest manager in Gaelic Games history, Nicky, surely. Oh, yeah. Oh, they'll never anybody match him. I mean, you probably already reeled off what he's won yeah. with 11 All-Irelands, including a 4 in a row, 18 Leinsters, 10 National Leagues. Now, interestingly, seven Welsh Cups, and in many respects, maybe that sums up Brian Cody, because he always, actual fact, uh, made it very serious. While, while it might be the strongest team he put out, he always went out to win the Welsh Cup because he, his... his mantra was you keep winning matches and it's, if you win matches you're obviously putting pressure on the guys who are trying to break into the team if you're a if you haven't been a, a regular player on the team but if you perform well in matches like the Welsh Cup you may very well keep a, another player out who is more established and Jamesy has a kind of alluded to that there as well that that's the type of manager he was and and definitely in relation to the uh, the the training in uh, in, in Nolan Park performance in there was was uh, was hugely important and I, I think what was I mean if Antic summed it up it was the period after the Leinster final this year and the Clare game I always knew when he got the players for three weeks now they did spend a weekend away in Carton House as well which is customary with Kenny but I knew if he got the players for three weeks he would bring something extra out of them because he didn't have them all year and it's one of the knock-on impacts of the shorter season now for inter-county managers they don't get a lot of time to really work on serious stuff between games because uh, of the fear of injury but what he achieved in Nolan Park he, he was able to instill confidence he was able to demand a huge effort from players in training in Nolan Park that was akin to a good inter-county game and that's how he was measuring players their ability to take on the heat of battle in Croke Park or Semple Stadium or, or wherever it might be and, and, and that's how he judged it and James is spot on again he was, he was ruthless about it and uh, he just Picked it, he picked the team with the selectors that he felt the team was announced on a Friday night and players would not have known in advance if they were going to make it or not. It was simple as that. If you're a part of the team, great. But he has certainly over recent times he's been emphasising a lot more the panel strength. Maybe during the great successful era, you know that team almost picked itself. But over recent times, we know Kilkenny have had to use 20 players, although most teams are tend tend to do that now. But Brian emphasised the need for the panel. And uh, maybe the last thing I'll say, and probably go back, I want to go back to Jamesy there, is that yeah. Kilkenny had to change their style a fair bit to, 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 to counter what Limerick were doing in terms of the shorter passing or the pop passing. And at the start of this year, it wasn't working great, to be quite frank about it. But he kept at it and kept players working on it and kept them believing that it, it's something they had to do to counter uh, particularly the Limerick style, but not exclusively. Plenty of the other counties were at it. Now, we probably have some way to go to match what the likes of Limerick are doing in that regard. But nevertheless, he has reinvented himself as a coach on a number of occasions. And he certainly has reinvented Kilkenny over a number of different times uh, in bringing different teams to championships. So, a uh, wonderful legacy, John. When he took over uh, he, in 1992, he was the captain of the All-Ireland winning team. You were on the same team then, Nicky, in, in Kilkenny in 1992. But in 1998, you just lost the All-Ireland Toffoli. When he took over, were big things expected? 
Well, it's hard to know because the last one we had, the last I learned we had one was 93, so there was a touch of a famine about it. I mean, I came in in the mid-90s and, and I didn't have huge expectations, but I did see one clear responsibility I had. It's not that we never went out to win every match. And Gene Jamesy was one of the teams that we played in the semi-final and uh, we got close enough to them. But I, I certainly saw that one of the things that needs to happen was to bring on a number of players that would most likely be finished off in, in good style by a future manager. And certainly Brian Cody done that. The first all Ireland he won had a number of players that uh, came through my own time so I'm not taking any credit for that but I'm just saying that's the guy he was but in my view the key moment in Brian Cody's uh, managerial career was probably the 2006 All Ireland final that Kilkenny won Cork were going for three in a row and I think it was a defining moment. While Brian had won all Ireland before that, nevertheless, defeating Cork in a three in a row really stamped him down as a, as a manager of substance. And had he lost that, that would have been three years in a row. Maybe, maybe he might have gone any further. Maybe he might have been let go any further. We, 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 we will never know that. But I do know that that will always be marked down as a very significant milestone in Brian Cody's managerial career because really the Kilkenny, the Kilkenny um, train took off after that and it really became a successful one because he was able to lay down clear markers maybe that he hadn't maybe been doing before. Uh, but by God, after the 2006... He was in control and he made some really tough decisions, left off some players that maybe people in Kilkenny were saying, what's he doing here at all? But look, that's the way he was. In the in the pursuit of success, there was no sentiment with Brian Cody. And has that made him at times um, a figure that's somewhat distant in the county? I wouldn't say distant, but I mean, if you were a player who was in that position who wasn't picked for a team or didn't make a squad or something like that, yeah, you weren't going to be happy about it. Why would you be happy about it? It's, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a hunger to play for Kilkenny, feeling you're good enough. But ultimately, decision rested with Brian Cody and his selectors. And uh, if you weren't deemed good enough, well, that's just the way it was. You, 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 had, to, you had to accept that. Uh, I mean, it's happened in the past as well, but maybe it was more pronounced uh, during Brian's reign. I mean, players were, were discarded and, and uh, he felt maybe maybe a lot of people, uh, supporters felt God is another year or two in this well-known player, whoever it might be. But Brian felt no, that person had come to the end of the road as far as their contribution to Kilkenny and uh, made the decision to, to step them down. Some might have been happy to stay for a period in the subs, others weren't, and they just departed the scene. But I mean, there was no sentiment about it and he couldn't be sent. I mean, his uh, his track record will show that in order to achieve what he achieved, he had to rule with a, with, a, with a hard fist. But he was fair to players as well. If you were performing, no matter what club you were from, if you were performing well, uh, you were going to hold on to your position. And that could mean somebody who maybe was more established might have to sit out that game and become part of the um, the subs or something like that. So, no, he was, a, he, was, he was a hard taskmaster. But, I mean, you can't argue with that. The success that's there with the All-Irelands and the Leinsters and the leagues and all that, I mean, they, they won't be equaled again, not in my lifetime anyway. You guys yeah. are a bit younger than I am, but they won't be achieved again in my lifetime and I can't ever see it happening anyway. Not too much younger, Nicky. Uh, Jamesy, <laughs> uh, 2009, uh, like that game against Tipperary, they were going for four in a row. Tipperary, the better team on the day, I felt. And, but just the, the will that Kilkenny had, that utter belief, which is um, rooted in success. Uh, Henry Shefflin penalty, Martin Comerford goal. They'd lose the following year, but then they'd come back and win another couple of All-Irelands. They'd lose in 13, they'd come back and win another couple. And it was just that doggedness in them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just that relentless pursuit of success. Um, yeah, I mean, look, listen, John, I mean, look, at the, you know, it was some era and, and populated by some some of the greatest players that ever played the game. I mean, you go through the team, the, the names. I mean, JJ Delaney, probably the best pure defender, you know, I, I've ever seen. Tommy Walsh, you know, what what a player, you know, the, the versatility, the, the character, the charisma that, that oozes out of him. Obviously, Henry... You know, and then guys like Owen Larkin, Jackie Tyrrell, Eddie Brennan. You know, you you could keep talking. Noel Hickey, um, James McGarry, phenomenal goalkeeper. Um, you know, even John Hine in the early days. I mean, you know, just just fantastic players. And I mean, and the genius of Cody, I suppose, was that I remember marking to somebody at the time that you know, what other manager could have Jackie Tyrrell going to train every night, fearful that if he didn't perform, he might lose his place to start in fifteen. And that was the hold that he had over those guys. And um, you know, they, they were some team, but I mean, to be able to keep them as hungry as they were and to be able to have this, the, the, the sustained success, John, they had over such a long period, um, you know, that, that took some feat of management. And, you know, I remember talking to somebody, 
you know, a fellow I know who who was on a some kind of a managerial course or whatever. Um, and this guy now again was a, a capable individual involved in business or whatever. And you know, he he saw the list of names of people who had applied for it, and down the very very bottom was Brian Cody, the Kenny Hurling manager. And and this was Cody now, obviously had signed up for this thing to see if was maybe you know was there some snippet some morsel that he could pick up on this course that it might that might add something to the, the Kilkenny uh, the Kilkenny cause and you know I think Nicky would have said that you know his ability to adapt and his ability I think just to you know to 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 keep current with the way the game was changing and evolving over the years as it did um you know that that maybe sometimes has been lost uh you know because he was I, I think someone that was prepared to adapt and prepared to learn and prepared to move if he felt um, that was what was required. But at the same time, I, I think he'd firm core beliefs, John, you know, things that he felt were intrinsic to success, you know, the ability to win your own possession, um, you know, the importance of work rate, honesty, uh, all those all those kind of things. And I think he never, you know, he never lost sight of those things, but at the same time was able to marry them with, with you know, maybe the modern changes as well. And um, yeah, I mean, look at it, I suppose his, his success reflects that. What will the legacy be of Brian in the county, uh, Nicky Brennan? Uh, is it a case that you've, you know, young boys and girls going around with hurls still in, in Kilkenny? You got the flags up when they're reaching the All Ireland last weekend. It's it's deeply embedded in the in the in the county's culture. What sure, I mean, if you're uh, if you're somebody who's uh, um, thirty years of age, I mean, you've had just a glorious thirty years in terms of Kilkenny success, and Brian Cody was at the, was absolutely at the heart of that. I mean, in the they put a statue up to Ollie Walsh in Thomastown, and there's a there is a, a, a big statue in Kilkenny to hurling in general. So, in at some time in the future, there will be a statue up to Brian Cody. Somebody will be putting that up. He's a free man of the city. He's a, the esteem in which he's held is very very significant. He has uh, spoken to business people at all levels. James just alluded to some of that a moment ago. At, where Brian was at something himself, but Brian has been asked to attend business conference to uh, try and explain to uh, some very well paid executives the whole ethic of teamwork and building bond bonding and team spirit and, and how you can how you can transfer that from the playing field into the corporate office as well. He he's been doing that for, for quite some time. And by the way, anytime he's done that, any proceeds from it were sent to James Stevens GA Club. That's a mark of the man as well. So he has a huge legacy here in Kilkenny. And I suppose in many respects we have to be very careful that whoever is going to follow him, the one thing we should do we should not be doing is trying to compare who follows Brian Cody uh, with his achievements and expecting that uh, there's going to be a similar outcome because it won't be achieved. So I think people in Kilkenny now would need to cop themselves on and realise that any new person coming in has to be cut a bit of slack here to give them a chance to to set their own mark on it and put their own method of, uh, of preparing the team uh, into place and that. So so while this is a, a very, very sad day for Kilkenny Hurling, it does give plenty of hope for the future that we have plenty of good hurlers there. But we also need to be careful that we don't impose some sort of crazy um, crazy difficulties or crazy targets on any new manager coming in because that wouldn't be fair either. And, uh, you know, we are a county that uh, has been spoiled of success, let's be frank about it, during the Brian Cody era. It has been a bit uh, thin on the ground maybe in more recent years. But last Sunday, Kilkenny showed they're not a million miles away. The best team won the match to be fair to Limerick, but Kilkenny were not a million miles away and a new manager has plenty of good talent to work on. And, uh, you know, we, we, we have plenty of hope in Kilkenny that uh, good days can come back again now under a new manager. And with all the leaders that Brian had under him, and I'm sure Brian will be the first person to, to cheer on the new manager, there's no shortage of contenders, uh, Nicky. You Henry Shefflin go, you've Eddie Brennan who's done well, you know, you've no shortage, you've like Martin Comerford's in the backroom team, DJ Kerry's been involved. Well, there's plenty, in, in plenty. Just, uh, there's there's plenty of guys because many of them have, uh, I mean, you have Michael Fenley getting plenty of experience in Offaly and has some some success. Uh, David Hershey has been successful in Kildare. You have Eddie Brennan in Leash and uh, he's been up in Dublin as well. Of course, Henry now gone to Galway and uh, Derek Ling, of course, has um, has won the All-Ireland with the under-20s. And not the maybe the best team that Kilkenny ever had at the start of the year, but they actually played in many the, in the way Derek Ling himself played, which is also uh, many of the ways Derek, or, uh, Brian Cody sets out his team. It was workmanlike. There was a good ethic about that team. And um, they won that All-Ireland maybe a bit against the odds. Now, 
having said that a couple of the counties stood down a number of players because they played him in the senior championship uh, which might not have uh, might have made it more difficult for Kilkenny but it was the manner in which Kilkenny won that under 20 that uh, I think people would have stood up and see that it was in the style of how a Cody team would work so that wouldn't have done uh, Derek Ling uh, any harm at all but I'm not going to say who it should be to be honest yeah. about it that, that's a county board issue now and ironically it's a, a, a decision that a county board has not had to make in Kilkenny since 1998 so that's a hell of a long time ago, John. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Nicky. Yeah, James, when we're talking about Limerick now, we're talking about three in a row, we're talking about four and a five, but we're always talking about the benchmark of comparing them to Kilkenny, and that, I suppose, is not an insubstantial legacy for Brian Cody. Yeah, um, and I suppose Limerick, you, you got the sense listening to Garod Hagerty's interview minutes after the match, John, that they're by no means done and dusted either. Um, you know, the age profile of the team, you take Nicky Quaid and Declan Hannon out of it, they're arguably entering their their, their prime. But you're dead right. You know, the, the, the Tommy Walsh, JJ, Henry, Eddie Brennan team, they're the benchmark. And, uh, you know, Limerick are on their coattails now with four and five years. You know, they, they, they win it next year, John. That matches the four in a row. And they're obviously heading for immortality after that. But, you know, I think the gap certainly closed this year. Um, you know, obviously, teams are working ever harder to 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 you know get to the levels that Limerick are, are, are at clear obviously we're very close in the Munster final you know Watford we know have been not that far away in closing the gap um, and obviously Kilkenny and Galway in the, the latter stages of the championship you know really put it up to Limerick and ask those ask those questions but yeah that Kilkenny team if, if those Limerick guys have have a target to aim at uh, they're it and you know even from John John Kiley's perspective um you know you could see the respect that himself and Cody had for each other, you know, when they, they embraced after the game. And, um, you know, I'm sure that, you know, maybe Kylie has, uh, has, has, has maybe some of Cody's targets um, on his wall as well. So something worth striving for, which, again, is depressing from, from a Clare or a Cork or two perspective, uh, given how impressive Limerick were last weekend. And just to finish, Nicky, you've known Brian a long time. Um, you know, he's not going to be on the inter-county sideline anymore, but I'm sure he'll be involved heavily in hurling. And I, I suppose it's it's not that I don't expect much fanfare. I don't expect a big uh, interview, uh, you know, procession at Langton's about this uh, retirement from inter-county game. It's kind of been done quietly and that's the way I'm sure Brian will probably want it. Well, the Kilkenny uh, Championships or League Championships at uh, the Junior started this weekend, but they start in earnest next weekend. Brian Cody will still be at all of those games, and I tell you what, he'll be at as well. He'll be wanting to. He'll be looking at the under eight scene, and uh, there might be an opportunity for Kilkenny County Board to just give him a give him a little job, maybe keeping an eye on uh, some of the the structures around the place, and uh, maybe giving some advice on that as well. He, I'm sure he won't want to get fully involved, but I think he still has a has a lot to offer. He knows the under eight scene. Even as the senior manager, he'll know very well who the up and coming players are. Uh, he's, he's very astute in that because he was always watching who was coming down the line uh, for inclusion in the wider developmental squad because they'd have had a panel of about 40. And the thinking there is these lads might make it for a year or two, but they need to understand the sort of discipline and uh, the sort of uh, work ethic required and the, and the physical exertions that are needed and the bodybuilding that, that needs to be done in terms of the whole physicality of the game as well. He will have been working on that. And I'm sure whoever his successor is as well will we'll also need to because you can't just be thinking about uh, just the, the, the season ahead. You have to be planning a bit for the future. Um, even, you know, Brian, obviously, there was it was his call when he was going to go. Um, that may not be the case with, uh, with whoever... Uh, follows them that we have to wait and see but but you do need to be have a vision for the future as well it can't be just uh, the year in question Nicky Brennan James O'Connor thanks so much for speaking about Brian Cody who stepped down today as Kilkenny Senior Hurling Boss we'll chat soon folks thank you thanks John Nicky Brennan and James O'Connor there if you want to text in any kind of tributes to Brian Cody who stepped down as Kilkenny Hurling Senior Hurling Boss today uh, after nearly 24 years 11 all Ireland. you can do so 5 3 one, six. we're going to take a break a much uh, anticipated break and get back uh, after that with uh, a latest from the Camogie semi-final back after this Off the Ball on News Talk Future Proof In December of 2004 a huge earthquake off the coast of northern Sumatra triggered a devastating tsunami in the Indian Ocean which killed more than 150,000 people in a dozen countries